third and final day at Sea Airspace 2018, we start today's video report with Mitsubishi Heavy Industries of Japan showcasing the latest design of their 30DX Future Frigate program. What are you showcasing this year at CR Space? Okay. Um, this is a, a special and a major display of this year uh, for MHI, and uh, it is a, a future multi mission frigate model. And uh, um, this is a uh, displacement is uh, over uh, approximately the 5,500 tons. And the uh, uh, length is uh, uh, approximately 130 meters. This model is uh, based on our uh, proposal for JMSDF. And uh, what makes this model different shows the three S, uh, such as uh, stealthy, smart, and scalable. Uh, especially for stealthy, uh, we applied MHI's stealth technology of fighter to reduce uh, this ship's uh, LCS character. And uh, we hope its scalable c capability meets a requirement of uh, other foreign uh, navies. And uh, we think it, it is a good opportunity to have uh, visitors well know our uh, products and uh, our technologies. I want to pro uh, participate next year at this event. Thank you. This vessel is known as the 30DX program in Japan. MHI is the prime contractor for this program. They are under contract to build eight for the JMSDF. The ship, based on this model, is fitted with a 127 Mark 45 Mod 4 naval gun system, 16 Mark 41 vertical launch systems, two remote weapon stations on top of the bridge, eight next generation ship-to-ship -ship missiles, a CRAM on top of the helicopter hangar, and a hangar and helicopter deck able to accommodate an MH-60J or K helicopter. Zodiac Milpro is showcasing for the very first time its Hurricane 1300. Let's check it out! This is the brand new Zodiac Hurricane. Uh, it's 13 meter long, uh, aluminum hull, uh, Mach 2, military air channel, so stepped hull. Uh, very fast platform powered by a quadruple 350 horsepower Mercury. And uh, this platform goes at 55 knots, uh, full loaded, full fuel, uh, 10 people on board. And uh, so this is a new development for Zodiac Hurricane. And, uh, so we, uh, we call this platform the Interceptor. It's in fact uh, a platform dedicated to go after the bad guys very quick and usually the people on board will kill the engines of the other platform and then uh, additional uh, people will come and take care of the, of the threat. But this is really uh, to intercept uh, somebody that is uh, going to do something obviously no, not acceptable. So this rib has a, a, a few uh, innovations, uh, particularly the seating. Uh, the seating is, uh, is removable, so you can really uh, uh, reorganize the entire platform the way you like. Uh, they are, all the seats are on tracks, and the seats are made in a, in a, in a way that uh, you minimize the space on board. Uh, for example, the back seat, uh, the additional seat, the back seat is uh, foldable and it's also uh, fully suspended to absorb the shocks when you, when you do a 50-55 knots. Obviously, the impact on the waves uh, could be uh, damaging for the uh, person personnel on board. We introduced this year uh, two new uh, equipment on this uh, 13 meter. Uh, one is the uh, joystick system from Mercury. So the advantage of this system is that you can really uh, maneuver the boat at idle speed and in any direction and particularly when uh, when you want to to park the boat 
uh, you can have a lateral move of the boat. So it's very low speed, it's five knots maximum, and it's very, uh, very easy to operate by rotation to increase the power from zero to 5,000 RPM. And then you can go left, right, forward and back, and the boat will move laterally if you, if you want to. The second uh, very important feature that we introduced this year is the Sea Keeper. So the Sea Keeper is a system that will stabilize your platform. So it's very important when you have an interceptor like this boat, because at one time the crew will be waiting for the target. It's a huge, prob huge probability that uh, the crew will, will have to watch uh, the other, uh, the threat for a few minutes. The sea could be bad, and then the boat will be moving, and then you have all your equipment, and you need to focus on your target. The advantage of the Sea Keeper is that the Sea Keeper will stabilize your platform from five degrees to zero degrees, zero to one degree in seconds. This year we are partnered with FLIR, you can see behind us. And, but we're also partnered with Teledyne Systems, which is down a few rows down that way. We're also partnered with SIS, Spatial Integrated Systems down here doing swarming. So we have many demonstrations going on in the water right now. So, so far today we've done 12 footers and eight footers on the water. We've done EOI or above water. We're doing sonar below water. We have electronic warfare equipment some, and then we're doing the swarming. At the FLIR booth right now, obviously we're demonstrating the FLIR Sea FLIR 230 unit on a 12-foot boat, showing the EOI or capabilities and that we can do it remotely and that we can do it real-time streaming back to the user. Here we are at the Teledyne booth and we're looking at the footage that was done on a 12-foot boat using a Teledyne Resan T20 sonar system. As you'll see here, some of the background pictures, we did a scan on the Mississippi River of what's called a Keokuk power plant. So we did full scanning, and they've been trying to do this for 40 years with divers, and we scanned in three hours what they couldn't do in 40 years. Depths anywhere from less than a foot to over 60 feet. The sonar itself physically is right down in the middle of the tunnel of the boat, and the nice part about the Mantis again is because the way it's designed, the sonar doesn't even know there's a boat around it, so it can make really clear, clear images. And we send those signals real time back to the operator, and now you get these great detailed images of the bottom of whatever you're looking at. All right, Josh, can you tell us a little bit about LPD-28, LPD-30, and LXR? They're, they're all based off the San Antonio class LPD-17 that we've been building in Pascagoula uh, for uh, over a decade now. And what, what uh, 28 and 29 become is a transition ship where we, we slowly move from a San Antonio class LPD to uh, a, an LXR CDD compliant uh, platform, which is what LPD-30 will be, which is Flight 2. What will be the main differences between LPD-30 and LPD-28? So from 28 to 30, uh, externally, it's, it's really going to be just a couple of areas. The boat valley is going to be modified to handle different uh, cargoes. We're going to move a crane so that it has greater reach capability to handle more, uh, more gear. And then the uh, air search radar is going from a 48 to a uh, ESER. Radar. Can you point uh, some of those differences on this model? Absolutely. So, so the uh, knuckle boom crane right here is um, a legacy crane from the LPD 7 San Antonio class. We're actually going to go to a more standard straight boom crane, and it's actually going to be relocated a little bit aft so that it can have better access to the after part of the boat valley. And then this black uh, SPS 48, that's where the Easter is actually going to go. The mast will look identical. There'll be some slight structural changes because it's a different weight, but uh, essentially that's the big changes. And uh, there will be LPD-30 will be built uh, in the same shipyard? LPD-30 will be built in Pascagoula and you know the Navy announced last week that the Flight 2 was going to be the LXR solution, so uh, we're excited to be part of that going forward. This is the VSR 700. It's a uh, 
unmanned vertical takeoff landing unmanned aircraft which we are initially proposing for naval use because that is where the first market for this kind of thing is needed because of the capability for vertical takeoff and landing. The advantage of this is that the size of it is such that you can put inside it uh, or onto it the sensors necessary for naval operations including um, targeting for tactical operations and um, it's also small enough to work inside a ship with a helicopter. So it doesn't displace a helicopter, but it, when it's airborne it gives you naval, medium naval helicopter capabilities with endurance of about 10 hours. We have a prototype um, and it's been developed. There's a movie just here of the, uh, the prototype doing its first unmanned flight with a safety pilot. And the next month or two it'll be flying without the safety pilot. We've developed to the point where we'll do that and we'll progress on through to the fully unmanned stage with this particular shape of aircraft. Uh, it may develop from this, but this is where we think it will go at the moment. Where you've got the payload in here in a sort of sealed compartment to keep the salt water and other um, debris off it. And then we'll also develop some of the external payloads for this one, for example, for Sonoboys, for anti-submarine warfare. Um, and we'll have a search and rescue payload, potentially. You probably wouldn't use those together, obviously, but it'll be basically a quick role change with a few people in a short time and able to work in ships with ship's maintainers, not necessarily an aviation group unless national doctrine declares you need aviation maintainers. The reason for that is because in ships you've got extremely competent engineers who do radars, missiles, gas turbine engines and everything else and they can maintain this. It's been designed so they can do it.